Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode of uh, Cutting Through Conversations That Go uh, Beyond the Plate. Uh, today we have uh, a, an a interesting topic, something that uh, I'm particularly interested in and something that uh, I uh, care about quite a bit uh, because it's a huge myth, it's a huge uh, misconception about a particular regional cuisine. And we are going to talk about the whole myth about the vegetarian tamilian. And uh, our speaker today is, is going to be Sri Bala, who has just joined, and I'm going to be adding her short. And uh, so, the, as I was saying, this is a topic that I care because regional cuisines in India, particularly from the south, uh, there we have Sri Bala. Sri Bala, how are you doing? Wonderful. How are you? All well, all well. Uh, so I was just introducing the topic and uh, since you're yes. uh, now live, let me introduce uh, Shri, who is our, our speaker for this evening. Uh, so she has a very, very interesting uh, career. She is a chartered or she was a chartered accountant by uh, training, a financial uh, consultant by profession. But she has turned out to be one of the most interesting chroniclers uh, of uh, South Indian uh, history, uh, South Indian food history rather. Uh, her training in food was conducted under her uncle, P.S. Sankaran, who was the, the son or grand, grandson of Minakshi Aman, the, the, son. Son the son of Minakshi Aman, who was uh, one of uh, Tamil Nadu's most famous cookbook writers, the first cookbook writer, actually, who wrote this book, uh, fabulous book, Samaitu Par, or translated to Cook and, and uh, See. Uh, so, Shri Bala, when does many things. Uh, she conducts uh, uh, food pop-ups uh, at uh, many hotels uh, across the country. Uh, she's also uh, hosts a television co cookery show. Uh, she's digitally archiving ancient South Indian recipes. She's planning her PhD on the food uh, of the Sangamera. And in her free time, she hangs around with the likes of Gordon Ramsay and V. Sangvi. So, uh, Shri Bala, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, so today we've got an interesting topic, uh, something I think that is close to your heart as well, and that is the myth of the vegetarian Tamilian. Now, yeah. in, in my opinion, um, and it's not just Tamilian, actually, we tend to club all of South Indian uh, food together. And this idea of the vegetarian um, South Indian, so to speak, has in my come from the, the proliferation of all these bunt uh, Udupi restaurants that we see in Bombay and North India, and uh, they largely produce the idli dosa, which is not even the food, which is really tiffin snacks uh, yeah. from South India. So do you think, would you agree with me when I say that that is the reason why we have this misconception about uh, Tamilian and South Indian food? Absolutely, yes. That is the okay. main reason. Because um, they were the ones who went outside their region uh, in the beginning, and uh, they started off their uh, restaurants called the hotels uh, mm -hmm. during you know fifties onwards. So the restaurant culture itself started. If you see, it's only nineteen fifties. Post the independence, right. months, the industrial development started in the bachelors mainly to you know, cater to the bachelors because right. they were moving the uh, villages and towns and they were coming to the city for uh, their jobs. That's mm -hmm. how these things joined started and they used to call these joints as hotels. So across South India, if you see, all these places were always called as hotel. Hotel something and bhavan. It will be like so that. Are you saying that in South India, in Chennai and other places, it was also the bunts uh, who came there and started and it yes, wasn't? Yes, they, they, yeah? they were the ones who came. And uh, for instance, in uh, Chennai, during the industrial uh, revolution, there was a, you know, not, I wouldn't call it an industrial revolution, it was industrialization, which happened right. in 19, um, during R. Venkatraman uh, being the, you know, on the helm and uh, taking the responsibility. That time, a lot of people used to come, you know, come and uh, stay in Chennai. And for them right. to cater, to these people were uh, starting, like, for instance, there is an old uh, Ganesh Bhavan, Hotel Ganesh Bhavan, the name will be like that. But they are okay. all from Agno. And uh, okay. they'll be, you know, and for instance, there is a very, very famous, um, it is now a hotel uh, called the Woodland. That again mm. is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Konkanese. 
Dash Prakash. Oh yeah, yeah, Konkani's. And then okay. uh, Dash Prakash. All of it. If you see in uh, South also, uh, hmm. these people are the ones who started the restaurants. And within Tamil Nadu, if you go away from Tamil Nadu, Chennai, if you go to deep, you know, local uh, other districts, the I used to have their own uh, restaurant. Again, call the hotels. There, the Iers will uh, cook. Like for instance, okay. Bilva, Mani Iyer, those kind of uh, me, you know, a little uh, better than a mess atmosphere. Okay. That is how we so started. So you're saying that uh, on the one hand you had so are you saying you said the konkanis you know not the not the the buns so konkanis are separate not the bun no, no. Okay. they are the konkani uh, like the shenoy the butt are the vegetarian konkanis okay so the gsbs not the bun yeah gsbs gsbs rather okay so south was mostly the the gsbs who, who came in there yes, now yes. Uh, and you said the ayers also uh, started their own uh, form of vegetarian restaurants vegetarian uh, restaurant Yeah, they they did have, and few restaurants are still continuing. For instance, few restaurants are there in Chidambaram also right now. If you go to a Temple Town in Chidambaram or a Temple Town of Kumbakonam also, if you go, there are few IERs who are continuing to run their restaurants, which are like eighty, okay. ninety years old. Okay, and they IERs are are your high caste Tambarams, right? Tambarams, yes, yes. Okay, okay. The Shaivites. The Shaivites, right? Yes. Uh, but you know in, in south india uh, i mean in in tamil nadu you also find a huge uh, meat eating population uh, yes, yes. so who are these people is it only located in a certain area or is it something that's actually widespread across the whole state it is widespread it is widespread and uh, you know probably before going into the community i would talk about a restaurant concept called the military hotels right they were all called the military hotels you can uh, still see them <coughs> excuse me uh, you can still have, see their name you know continuing to be called as military hotels in tamil nadu as well as in bangalore okay and uh, bangalore majority of them are run right now by the gowdas in okay. tamil nadu it will be the people from Actually, I think we lost you there for a little bit. So, yeah, I, so I was talking about the military hotels. Uh, yeah. They, they were, uh, you know, uh, for instance, in Chennai, if you go, there's a place called Velu Military. All of mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. You no, know, the name military is very, very interesting. Uh, right. After the vegetarian restaurant started, uh, yeah. these, uh, you know, the, the regiments and all were uh, bifurcated, and each uh, city had a regiment, the army. Okay. Hmm. So these people. During their break, they will have one day off, right? During their yeah. off, they went to the city. That time, there was a dearth for uh, you know the non-veg uh, joints. Okay. So okay. the the you no know, so to cater to them, these non-veg mm -hmm. joints uh, started. That's and these were frequented by the military uh, people with their uniforms because they have to come with their uniforms. Even even today, when they come out, they come with their uniforms. Or in a battalion, when they come, like. Five six people. You can easily even in the malls. In, you know, currently, if you see from uh, uh -huh. the uh, training academy and all uh, from Gindi, you can see those uh, yeah. people in the uniforms. They come in their uniforms to the malls. So though oh, like okay. that, say in the fifties or sixties, that's when this okay. military started. Okay. And, and these military uh, people were from all over, or they were just only over. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, you know, oh. they needed to cater to the military people for their non-veg craving. These restaurants were uh, started, and that's why they the tag military hotel. Okay. The name okay. military hotel started, and they they used to give you you know n number of non-veg uh, dishes, including the inner parts, the uh, internal okay. organs. So right. Those are right. Like the uh, blood and all of it, you can get animal blood oh, and all of it. Hmm. That so is and, and who ran these restaurants? Are. Pardon me. And who who ran these restaurants? The people from Madurai, uh, Dindigal, those areas where there are hardcore uh, non-veg uh, meat eater people, they used to come here in Chennai and uh, they continued. They started these restaurants, and okay. they were used. Okay. Okay. It will be like a mess type. You know, no, no uh -huh. full uh, kind of a restaurant, and okay. then so very, very, almost like off. a canteen in a sense. Yeah, 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 a canteen. That's why it's called a mess. Okay, 
Okay. Yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, then there is. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Go on. Uh, what I thought was then now I'll go to the community wise. Yeah. Uh, please. Okay. How how Tamil Nadu has got its own you know uh, districts and the important communities there and their food habits. If you see right. in uh, Chennai, you have a very very strong uh, Mudaliyar community. Okay. They are all from you know mostly the Orkard Mudaliyars, and mm-hmm. they are again um, majority of them are uh, non-vegetarians. Then you okay. have the fishing hamlets because it's a sea coast. You have the fishing hamlets, so those people are all you know into uh, seafood. Right. And if you go down south, little further down. uh you have your ratrichi uh, then tanjavur uh, you know though there and all you can find lot of chettiars again chettiars will be two one okay. the vegetarian chettiars and the non veg chettiars so they will have their own uh, food then the hard the belt the main hub of non veg zone or the ha- haven of non veg is madurai oh okay madurai mainly because the pandya the in ancient uh, times pandya's uh, capital madurai okay. and uh, they were all uh, warriors the kshatriyas yes. so <laughs> they are uh, coming you know their ancestry they are all meat eaters okay okay that's why these restaurants are also run by many people from madurai and okay. uh, you know madurai has got of lot of caste uh, uh, it's a little sensitive i will not go into the caste mentioning the caste when it comes to madurai uh, we okay. will just stick to the food and okay. uh, when it comes to food uh you know a uh, night life just like uh, bombay madurai has a good very good night life ah uh, yes i know it okay <laughs> yeah. yeah go on and, go on uh, you know till uh, right now too many restrictions police and all of the food uh, you know licensing and all of it has started otherwise uh, it was called tunga nagaram the city which does not sleep mm-hmm. tunga nagaram, which does not sleep and uh, they are all famous for their idli so okay. there'll be a with idlis there will be lot of non veg curries mm-hmm. okay so you will have a chicken curry or a mutton curry and the con the staple will be the idli in the nights in the night huh and in the nights yes it will go up okay. to 2 o'clock in okay. fact my brother used to work in uh, time he's a journalist and right. uh, he was working for indian express so after finishing his work in madurai he was, first posting was in madurai so after finishing his uh, you know work Uh, he used to come and have his uh, food around eleven thirty, twelve in the night. Hot right. idlis. Okay. 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 So you know. Uh, yes. So you know when when I was in um, Tuticore in actually, uh, yes, yes. I was introduced to this idea of the night club, and yeah. I was really really surprised. I said Tuticore, and I mean it's like beyond the backwaters. It's a really sleepy place. What possible night club could you have over here? Yeah. and uh, as it turned out the night club was actually all these late night very very basic restaurants which were yeah. actually meat meat restaurants and that was the meat idea it was yeah it was the, this night restaurant more than yeah. more than a, a disco really the reason is uh, that is again a port city okay so looking again is a port city and uh, the people after their work you know in the harbor when they come back they would want to chill out Yeah. So, the kind of uh, restaurants you will have there. There again, see if you see entire Tamil Nadu, each uh, uh, you know region or each district has a strong community. Okay. Based on that region, so if you see Western Tamil Nadu, you'll have a very very strong uh, community. Then uh, South Coast, like Nagar Koil and Tanya Kumari, there is a community, very strong community. Then South Arcot, North Arcot, then Tanjavur. Kumbakonam and Tiruchi in the center, then Madurai, Dindigal, you know this side. So right. the, the each place has got a very strong community, and then oh. you have Muslim and the Christian population. Absolutely, yeah. So when it comes to the Muslim, they have a very very unique uh, cuisine, and if they are settled, you know, there there the Muslims have got a very unique cuisine. The reason being, they have an Arab influence into their culture. and they are also uh, you know uh, descendants of the arabs for instance nathapuram right. uh, and kirakare and all if you see they definitely have if you see their uh, dna structure itself there is definitely a trace of an arab influence in their gene itself okay and uh, and if there if it is a sea, sea coast where it was you know in the ancient history connected to 
the southeast asian countries then mm. their culture again will be little similar to the southeast asian country food culture okay 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 now uh, you talked about the the pandian and you talked about a pandian influence now uh, meat eating is not something that is new in in tamil nadu obviously not. it it was something that uh, goes back how far back would you estimate that it goes i mean into what part of ancient history i can always relate it to sangam that is my core uh, research sangam right. uh, literature i am doing the third sangam uh, thesis which is okay. uh, 200 bc onwards so if you okay. see 200 bc onwards there is a mention that other than the brahmins and the J- jains were there even in sangam okay okay they were tamil speaking jains though okay and uh, other than the brahmins and the um, jains rest of them were all meat eaters that is what everyone is uh, yeah 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 it is okay. mentioned like that and uh, based on the work you do depending hmm. on the physical activity your uh, food is dependent on that okay so in what so, in what sense i mean was it like, like based on your uh, profession yeah. you were allowed to eat yes, yes. certain dishes so, and if you generally okay. the the community they they were based on the the profession also was dependent on the community okay you will be a warrior right automatically when you go to wars you need that energy so protein rich food so right. automatically you will be a non vegetarian if you are a desk yes. person if you are you know looking after the finance of the kingdom then hmm. you are a vegetarian that is how okay. the uh, and if you are a priest in the temple those kind of things depending on the activity you do and how you are associated with gods or those kind of things that way it okay. was uh, dependent and the food was uh, determined on the community okay so are there any particular meats or something that you know they they ate or they focused or was there something that was prohibited or did they eat everything really no chicken does not have a mention at all in the sangam so okay. probably i uh, feel it came much later into the uh, culture and right. um, um you know um the deer meat then tortoise all of it is uh, wild boar all of Largely it are mentioned. game yeah yeah game game uh, birds so those are all uh, mentioned in the uh, sangam uh, literature and right. uh, when it comes to um, the uh, war zones where the people and there, there is a constant war between the cholas and the pandyas they were okay. always uh, war, they were waging wars against each other and mm-hmm. if there was a war between these two what happened? see as, as uh, you know um, probably i need to tell a little bit of brief about it the war will be between 6 am to 6 am and 6 am to 6 okay. pm sorry 6 okay. uh, am to 6 pm after that uh, they will have to stop the war they cannot oh. continue the war so after uh, the event the war stops in case they are running out of their meat the dead carcass will be the uh, meat uh, that is a horse or the elephant will be their meat wow because okay. they don't leave the, and generally uh, the war will be fought on the river bank so okay. that you know it is easy strategically it is easy for them to cleanse themselves uh, disposing the bodies and all of it that's why the war will they will select the places to where the war also needs to be conducted that's what is written in the literature also how a okay. war will be fought they will uh, select the date from you know start date will be mentions end date of course nobody knows and where exactly at which place they should start their war and invariably it is on the uh, river banks okay okay can and you take us character. yeah can you take us through some of the dishes that you've actually come up with some of the dishes that you uh, uncovered from this period uh, uh, some of the yeah. meat based dishes yeah meat of course it's a very very famous one i've uh, discussed in several forum and also uh, if you remember i've cooked this also which is yeah. a uh, you know a lamb leg this is from a poem of uh, karigala cholan in uh, sangam literature okay Okay. Uh, his uh, so uh, again in Sangam, each king will have a poem. There are uh, broad classifications called the eight toge and patta patta. That is eight uh, poems, like you know, eight uh, like your sonnet fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Eight toge, patta patta. In that, that is a broad classification. Under that, you have these kings like your Chera Chola and Pandya kings. 
therefore rules and all will be combined into these eight thogai or patta patta and hmm. uh, in that i should go each king's um, you know history will be mentioned as to how he was running the government again in that broad classification there is an agam and a puram puram means external in the sense what the king was doing how his inter outside hmm. relation all of it was there and agam is within the interpersonal relationship father mother uh, daughter and mother lover and uh, girl those kind of relationship those are all the poems so if you take this um, karigala cholan his uh, poems are coming under uh, the, the classification is pornaratru padai in that pornaratru padai there is one poem the way he has treated his guest when they came to visit him that right. is the which i have taken and i have curated a menu which is like it's a, l- a lamb leg and that cooks on its own fat overnight cooking and um, it is on a stone okay and okay in those days right now it, it's uh, like uh, we can't use we had, we don't use that uh, grass the dhruv grass we call right, it as right, ar- right. which is always associated with lord uh, ganesha whereas yeah. in those days it was used for cooking and okay, that okay. lamb was smoked in those in that grass yeah because of its medicinal it. property this is what If you, you did at uh, the this thing at trident. the trident in in bkc yes, yes i remember yes, this yes, yes. yeah yes yeah. yes so that, okay. it is a lamb leg and the basic very very basic ingredients like the black pepper and long pepper and you know um, it, it it has to cook on its own uh, slow cooking and it will release its own fat and then finally it has to be smoked in the grass and then it becomes so tender it falls off the bone oh interesting okay okay and he has given a broth brothy uh, liquid which which went with this meat it seems the poem says that the person who was having it couldn't hold it because it was too hot wow. and it was a wooden uh, bowl in that so, he was how, how many of these dishes have actually survived uh, are, are they still eaten are they still no, practiced no no, no 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 probably no? i myself and few others maybe they are digging and bringing it to uh, you know not many see the moment i say you have to smoke the um, uh, you the know grass. the uh, leg in grass they will <laughs> they'll tell me have you gone mad it is right now if i tell them that you'll have to do this they'll say right, it is right. you know so orthodox that this particular grass is only used for lord ganesha how can i use it for uh, cooking a lamb they won't okay. let me do but I, i am trying to say that this is how the culture was then then okay so what what is the culture right now i mean if you had to say if you had to describe the various uh meat eating habits or the, the various different types of you know dishes how would you kind of describe what it is today yeah see sangam again always had uh, five uh, landscapes and based on the landscapes the food habit was uh, determined something similar to that what is existing even today just that okay. the chili got added to our uh, culture while it was only black pepper or the long pepper in ancient times uh, when yeah. it comes to current period also if you see the region uh, for instance the um, uh, kanyakumari or uh, nagarkoil uh, people they have exclusive uh, you know the seafood uh, culture again chennai hmm. come to chennai north chennai if you go there are there are several fishing hamlets so they right. are in take because of the proximity of fish they they themselves are fishermen they will go on and you know they go for a net and they catch so their food habit itself will be that intake of fish will be more in them okay. but when you go on western tamil nadu which is like your coimbatore tirupur ero kind of a thing where the red meat will be more lamb and uh, chicken uh it will be more that's why you if you see in um, the western tamil nadu there's a very famous dish right now called palli palayam chicken okay which is nothing but uh, the uh, chicken it's a, a semi dry uh, preparation which is a very very popular dish among uh, many people right now you know and it has got a red chili which is soaked in uh, water and ma- a paste is made with that it's very okay. spicy So, okay. so you can I can always make a similarity between Sangam's uh, five landscapes to the current eating culture also. And again, if you come to Madurai, which is a landlock, you know, other even though there is a river, there is no sea presence there. So there hmm. is river 
river fish which is uh, uh, which uh, yeah and uh, again so they go to the red meat okay. so it's okay. very similar just that the flavor profile has changed so is it generally very spicy uh, the food the, the meat food uh, because a lot of the vegetarian um, is not spicy actually no the meat is literally spicy but whereas if you come to um, nagar koil and kanyakumari they are uh, sp- meat is not spicy the reason being they are close proximity you know they have the kerala influence in them if you go to okay. malabar malab not all kerala is uh, less spicy if you go to malabar alone really spicy food. Spicy. yeah But yeah part of uh, kanyakumari and uh, nagar koil the spice levels are little less compared to the other regions in tamil nadu and okay. uh, the cooking uh, method also the kongu culture the kongu nadu is seven districts of western tamil nadu so if you see the map of uh, tamil nadu is like this so western yeah. tamil nadu seven districts there they don't have uh, they don't marinate it. the direct okay. slow cook Mm-hmm. and uh, what happens is uh, they will uh, they, they spice the number of ingredients which go into their curries are also very very minimalistic okay it is runny, uh, curry it is not very thick it's not gooey very runny that kind of a pro- flavor profile when it comes to western tamil nadu the kongu food but when you come to um, madurai or uh, chettinad first of all many people should understand that not all entire tamil nadu is not chettinad yeah <laughs> you know many many people make that mistake many people make that mistake and think uh, entire tamil nadu is chettinad definitely not just That's like any other yeah. any other state every 50 kilometers the flavor profile change the same thing happens here also just like chettinad came up and you know I, <laughs> it has lost its flavor totally lost its flavor right now whenever wherever i go Okay. So, so we have a uh, very strong sorry so we have a question from chef rao and yeah. who i think i don't know if you saw the question he says what is your favorite non vegetarian dish so well shibala is vegetarian uh, so she's still <laughs> vegetarian i think i don't think we've converted her so what is your favorite non vegetarian dish or your meat dish to cook really to cook, to cook um i love to cook with mutton okay any particular dish that uh, that you find mutton more interesting Ma- mutton korma and mutton biryani is something for me biryani means it has to be mutton okay so, so like uh, chicken profile uh, for a b- biryani the depth of the flavors are not there in chicken biryani i i, I feel it that while and cooking uh, so mutton curry and you also love uh, sea fish that is the sea fish uh, fry when i'm doing when i'm cooking i like that okay also. Okay. And so, prawns yeah. and uh, prawns are something which I can play around because it's a very very uh, you know flat uh, profile, so mm. flavor profile. So that I play around with my own uh, dishes. Okay. I create my. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, the, it's very interesting that we've got so many different kinds of. Uh, uh, regions, um, you know, so many different parts of uh, Tamil Nadu. We all kind of think of it as. being just one similar yes, thing yeah. that one it's it's one uh, thing and yet it's so divisive in terms of or separated rather in terms of both yeah. geographical region and uh, in yes. terms of uh, community yeah uh, but so say supposing i am an outsider um, i'm visiting mm. say one, any city in in tamil nadu for the first time and mm. i'm looking out for meat i mean what kind of a restaurant or what kind is there any particular brand or any style of restaurant that i should be looking out for that i or i should ask for i would always tell you to visit the mess if okay. you want to have a proper you know non veg uh, food uh, as i told you it is a no frill place and you will get the perfect flavor profile they don't try to impress you with uh, additional cream or uh, coconut milk or anything they will cook in mass because for okay. them it is not lunch time you know um, bachelors or who are working community come they have to have a specific meal so that is the actual place you should go and have your food okay and, and these messes are all, all over uh, in every city right all over yes 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 and uh, in the, if you are in a coastal town okay like uh, wherever there is a beach in the case after 435 you definitely need to visit the beaches to have the seafood there 
Okay. You will have to be careful about their hygiene and the food color they add. But at okay. least for one day, you can just ignore, close your eyes, and have that food. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Together, you know the local love, local love. Okay, so I, I was just thinking that you know this uh, talking about messes. I mean, Dindigul biryani is that also something yes. that you would get at a mess, or is that like now a separate thing altogether, right and you'd go to a biryani to place? A, yeah. See, right now they are all uh, restaurants which are uh, specializing. Uh, I would talk about uh, maybe I'll uh, take few minutes about you know and talk about the biryani in um, Tamil Nadu. I'll just stick to the Tamil Nadu biryani alone. Biryani yeah. as such, uh, on a Sunday, sir. um me major business in okay. uh, across tamil nadu you can see and madras and chennai you can see lucan corner will have the so when it comes to biryani you have uh, the dindigal biryani and you have the orpad biryani there is one more place not many people know which is in tiruchirappalli where you have visited tiruchirappalli there yeah. there is 55 km from uh, tiruchi there is a place called inam kulathur okay they open on sunday and uh, they will uh, cook the biryani there like uh, you know a huge portion some i think 500 or 555 uh, kgs of uh, biryani wow only on sunday only on only on sunday and their uh, cooking technique is totally different from the dindigal biryani the ambur biryani okay ambur biryani is orange dindigal is brown and in other words the biryani will handle the masala with lemon juice it's totally different oh, so they okay. have so these are the, uh, the the broad classification you will only talk about the ambur and the dindigal but you have this inam kulathur biryani and if you go down south you have the rautar style the muslims rautar biryani and when you come to chennai there is a biryani called the Uh, gilli biryani. Gilli actually is not gilli. This gilli, the wet biryani, but huh. it's like our Hindi. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, it, we have a very very famous uh, biryani uh, that is cooked with basmati rice, not the uh, uh, rest of it is all sira ka sambar rice. But this okay. uh, gilli biryani alone, uh, it's a major uh, business in uh, Chennai, which is the gilli okay. biryani, which very very uh, wet. Which is a you know the tomatoes are made into a puree and uh, used in that biryani. So that is wow. the gilli biryani. These wow. are the biryani wow. you can uh, find in when you come to Tamil Nadu. Well, uh, clearly, like I need to make another trip. I need to make a trip when you are there uh, in in, uh, in in the city. But uh, Shiva, yes. thank you again so much. I mean, I know we just welcome, touched welcome. very 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 briefly on on the subject, and we just I mean. I know that there is a lot more to be to be said about it, and uh, once we go into the various uh, communities, there's much more to explore. But uh, I just hope that you know, as just to get the sense that we've at least broken the the myth that you know there's in, in Tamil Nadu all you will find is vegetarians. That we there is a lot of uh, food with non-veg in the sense when you come to Madurai, if you want to have your breakfast, the people will serve you mutton curry, kolambu with idli. Wow. <laughs> you start your day with <laughs> mutton curry <laughs> okay well that that's a really good start of the day so i mean yes. I, think, i think that is definitely something i should uh, try and do but uh, thank you uh, so much for uh, sharing your time with us uh, thank you everyone for joining us and listening in and i will see you um, on monday evening uh, so monday we've got uh, a different topic something a little more sensitive and something which i thought we really need to talk about because it's not addressed often enough and that is about uh, anxiety depression and mental health in restaurant kitchens and okay. chef uh, thomas zacharias is going to be speaking on this so please uh, do join us uh, looking forward to seeing all of you again uh, on a monday um, have a great week have a great weekend stay safe say well thank stay you well. thank you bye bye thank you shiva yeah